So I thought I would take you behind the scenes of some of the images that we captured today um, at the poppy field and to show you some of the edits that I would do and some of my just overall comments now that I can sit and kind of reflect on these images here. Um, again, when you're photographing with a cell phone, you're going to get really contrasty images, especially when you're following like my tips of like putting the light behind the subject and the light isn't shining onto the subject, you're going to get some like contrasty images, but I do find that that in generally can be fixed in like editing. So I'm using Lightroom on my iPad. You could use any photo editing app. It doesn't have to be Lightroom. Um, I use it because I find that it has the most features that I like to use. I also use it on my computer. So when I'm editing like my professional shoots with clients. I like to use it with that as well. So I'm just the most familiar with it, I find. So this image that we took here of Asher laying in front of the poppies is super cool. I really love it. I can tell though by looking at it that there's, uh, it's, it's just a little dark in places and it's got some contrasty bits. So I'm gonna show you how I would fix, fix that. So to start with, I'm gonna take the highlights down, which is gonna bring some detail back in that sky. Um, back behind him and I'm going to bring the shadows up. Um, now I'm just looking at his face and kind of some of the darker bits here just to see what kind of, a, of an effect that it's having. I can tell by looking at his face that he looks quite blue and what that means is the color temperature of the photo is off. So when a dog's face or in his case it's his face because he has white fur on his face but if a dog has white fur and it looks blue that's how you know the color temperature is just kind of out of whack same thing if you have a black dog and they look blue um same same thing so this time of day i find that the color temperature always needs to kind of be adjusted yeah so the color temperature we're just going to kind of slide it to where you can see that it looks way too yellow and then i just kind of back it off from there um you want to be care careful i do notice in a lot of pictures that i see people sharing that the color temperature is just off their dog looks like a completely different color than what it's supposed to be so i would definitely suggest if you're photographing this time of day to kind of have a watch out for stuff like that um, I always take the vibrance up a little bit, never the saturation. Um, it's always vibrance, saturation uh, just oversaturates colors that are already saturated. Vibrance adds um, saturation to colors that are unsaturated, if that makes any sense at all. Just adjust vibrance, not saturation. Okay. Um, I don't think I want to add any of these effects. I think that the lighting now looks okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go into their masking tool. And what I'm gonna try and do here is add a new mask. And you can see that there's a select sky option. So I'm just gonna see what happens. Yeah, it's put the sky in red. So that's kind of nice. I'm gonna do a little subtraction, subtract from mask, and I'm gonna select subject. So it for sure takes Asher out of this masking part. Now what I'm gonna try and do with the mask is I'm gonna bring the highlights down in the sky, just kind of a little bit more, maybe like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue into the sky just to kind of make it a little bit more blue. And that is about it. So that is before any adjustments to the sky. And that is after. So it's just subtle, um, just adding a little blueness to the sky. Okay, and I'm gonna hit done. And then I'm gonna go into crop and I'm going to frame this up just a little bit better. So I'm trying to center him a little bit in this image. And what I'm looking at here is the distance on either side of his body. So I'm centering his whole body within the frame. Um, and I'm making sure there's as much distance on the left of him as there is on the right of him. And that looks good to me. Can I get rid of this leash? That is a good question. Let's just try it out here and see what happens. Um, it didn't do a crappy job. Not so bad. I think I may take that actually. It's not great, but I tell you right now, when you share this on social media, no one's gonna notice. But if I zoom in like this, you can see where the leash was and <laughs> I mean, it's not great. It hasn't done an amazing job, but I think for the purposes of what we're going to be using this for, it's fine. 
I'm gonna remove that little sunspot in the grass there. You can always just kind of go back over these areas and now, you know, I'm probably just being really picky, but that's kind of how I am. So anyway, done. And I think that this image looks really good. How do I get rid of this menu? There we go. Look, uh, so there's the before, which looks dark and blue. And after, it looks all sunny and he's so happy. Okay, so that's our first one down in the bag. What's next? Um, I really like this like over the shoulder look that he's doing here. So I'm gonna go into my light adjustments I kind of do the same thing, bring down the highlights, lift up the shadows. I'm watching his face to make sure it's not too much. So that is too much. That is what too much looks like, where he starts to look a bit gray. What's supposed to be black looks gray. So you wanna make sure that you pull it down um, and do it so much so that he doesn't look gray. He still looks black, but not quite as dark. And again, I'm looking at him and he's totally blue. So I'm gonna go down into the color menu and start adjusting this temperature. I'm gonna lift it so that I can see that it's too yellow. And now I'm gonna bring it down. So too much warmth. And I'm gonna add back in some coolness. I can hold my finger down here for the before and the after. Before, after, I might adjust it just a teeny weeny little bit more. Okay. And remember what I said about saturation and vibrance. So you're gonna hit the vibrance up to 10, leave the saturation alone. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be adding in any crazy effects. Let's do a crop. And again, I'm just gonna kind of center him here. Looking on either side of the image, he looks pretty centered. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit done. Now this leash, I don't know, this remove tool here in Lightroom does not rock my socks. It's kind of a hot mess, which is why I like to use Photoshop for stuff like this. But hmm, it's not doing a bad job. I do find on dogs, especially when I'm trying to remove things like leashes, I like to stop right here where the body meets the grass. Um, and I find it does a better job rather than just selecting the entire leash. I mean, I don't hate that. It's done a really good job right there. Um, let's try and add like a vignette to this image. So a vignette is essentially adding a little bit of darkness all around the outside of the frame. And you can definitely go too far with this. Oh, wrong way. So, okay, that's too far. Um, with these effects, you have to really be careful because I find that they can start to look really cheesy and really corny really quickly and we're trying to avoid that so we're trying to you know make your images look sharper want people to look at them longer you know make sure that they look intentional and that they're awesome and that we're not you know adding too many like post editing effects to them in my opinion that's not what i want to teach you to do so if i hold my finger down here i should get a before you can see that it's dark and then it's blue boom and then after he looks really lovely sitting in this poppy field okay what's next oh i remember <laughs> so here's a what not to do okay so there's a couple things going on here we've got the horizon line is going like this and in the video while we were on location this is what i'm trying to teach you not to do so you don't want the horizon line going right through your dog's head it just isn't the right perspective. So if you ever notice that there's anything in the back, and let me just say, it's summertime. So I see this all the time, like all the time on social media, because we're at the beach, right? We're at the beach, people are having fun with their dogs and the horizon lines are either like, like, you know, like going through a part of the dog that you don't want, like their head, or they're completely crooked. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing that drives me crazy more. Well, there's a few things I can think of, but straighten your horizon lines. If you have them in your images, please, for the love of God, straighten your horizon lines and then try to be intentional. Again, mindful of where they are cutting through your dog. So just, you, you start to program yourself like this after a while and you just kind of start to notice these things. So like when I was recording the film for you this morning, it was either, you know, lift yourself up or lower yourself down to adjust that horizon line in the back. It's position of the lens to the subject, right? So you want to try and have your lens at least at eye level, but this roadway was elevated behind him. So I just took a little bit of adjusting, but that's why in my opinion, this image doesn't look great. 
Uh, the other the other reason why I I don't like this image um, is because of this this giant white space that's in the left hand side of the corner and the reason why is because your eye is trained to find the lightest part of an image first so when you first look at this um yeah okay cute, cute dog whoa and you're just kind of like what's that like in the corner like it's just where your eye goes you want to try and direct people's eyes into an image where they're going to see the subject first and kind of like land there for a little while. Maybe look at the surrounding, you know, area where he is like, oh, look at those cool poppies. Wow, that's some really nice light, but not like the bright spot of an image. So that was why after I took it, I was like, no, we need to reposition Asher so I can get a better background like behind him or adjust the camera angle. I really am quite happy with how the portrait mode worked on these images. So this is an example of portrait mode. I can tell because the background here is all kind of fuzzed out with this nice soft bokeh. Um, that is not, you know, like portrait mode can be very hit and miss. Um, and I'm just gonna edit this quickly while I'm talking here. Um, so what I really like about this is that it's given it that nice, like softness, which I think is exactly what, you know, people really love to see and what is going to speak well in your images. Um, again, with this temperature here, gosh, all of these are just so blue and it's hard to get it right. Again, when you're dealing with cell phone images, you are shooting in JPEG. So JPEG files already have color correction put on them by the device itself. So when you're color correcting in an app like Lightroom or Snapseed or whatever you're using, you're editing an image that's already been color corrected. So that's why it makes it hard. That's why raw format is becoming a thing. Apple has Apple raw. I, I don't, I haven't used it yet, so I don't, no, I actually, uh, yeah, no, I can't even say that if I've used it and if, um, if I would recommend it. Um, I just think for like, in most circumstances, you're gonna wanna photograph in JPEG. It just makes smaller file sizes. So therefore it is easier for you to have on your devices, um, unless you were doing something special in particular. But here we go, before and after of the color corrections. Um, again, if we want to go in and see what we can do with this leash here and maybe this little bit of the poppy I'll take out. That's the one thing I notice about photographing with flowers is that there, you know, there's little bits and pieces of these flowers kind of sticking up all over the place and it kind of makes it a little difficult. In some of these here, there's like, you know, a piece like right in front of Asher's nose and it's so distracting. But what I actually really like about this image is I really like like the poppies on either side of his head. I think that those are really cute. And uh, yeah, I quite like this image. I think that I'm okay with this and that it's done. So I'm just gonna show you the before and after. Okay, so I have for you another what not to do image here. Um, so this picture of Asher, um, the sun is again still behind him, but look at what is happening to his face. So because he has his head uh, tilted up in that type of a position, we are getting a lot of light right here. So right on his nose and that right there is causing a really bright highlight on the front of his face. That is not you know, a very desirable look. Um, I'll show you how I corrected this in a minute, but why it's happening is the light source is coming behind the dog and it's coming over his head and it's hitting the front of his nose. Now I see this happening a lot in images that are taken like midday when the sun is right overhead and it's kind of like spilling onto the back of your pet's head and again down onto their nose. And it's just creating that really bright highlight. It's not ideal. Um, it doesn't look great. And I would, if you catch this in camera, like on location, if you catch this happening, just reposition your dog, find a different way. So to fix this problem with Asher is to lower his head. So this image here, his head, his nose is lowered down and you can see that there is no strange highlight on his nose. Um, I quite like this image, so let's do a quick edit with it. I'm going to, first of all, straighten the 
background. Um, I am gonna crop that out anyway, so I hope to just, yeah, move it like that. And so I'm gonna put his eyes up on that top two third line and his head is going to be right in between the um, intersecting points. So if you can see that, I've centered his head. I always look at the space on either side of the ears to make sure that I've centered it properly. And he's got lots of room for his feet in the bottom of the image. So I am happy with that crop. I love it. I think he looks like he's, you know, surrounded by these beautiful flowers. So I'm taking the highlights down a little bit. I'm pulling the shadows up a bit. Again, being mindful to make sure he doesn't look gray. Um, I'm going to adjust the color temperature and warm it up mm, just a bit. I feel like that looks pretty good. Take that vibrance up to about 10. I enjoy that. I'm just looking at effects here. I'm gonna add like a touch of a vignette. I enjoy that. I think that looks good. I'm gonna try a different um, mask here. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign and I'm gonna go select subject. So now it's selected him. It's left off a little bit of his foot down there at the bottom, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. And I just wanna see what it's like if I bump these whites up a bit. bumping up the whites and I'm taking down the blacks just to give him a little bit more contrast and to help him stand out. So if I hit done and I go to like the big part of the image here and I hit before and after, I can see that that's added a nice effect. Okay, let's try and remove this leash and see how we do with this. This healing tool has not let me down today so far. All right, I'm gonna adjust that brush size, bring it down. Let's see what we can do in here. Is it gonna fill it in? So I think the, I know a lot of people leave leashes in on photos and you know, I don't hate it, but what I don't like about leaving leashes in on photos is that it does create a distraction point. Um, especially if your leash is like a bright color or it's like coiled up in front of the dog or you know, whatever. I don't love anything that distracts the eye, the viewer's eye from your dog um, or whatever it is in the image that you're wanting them to look at. So final edit on them, this image before and after. Love it. Okay, these last two images here are my faves. We have this one here where I have used the portrait mode. So the reason why I can tell that it's a portrait mode photo is all of the background is kind of soft and out of focus. Cell phones are notorious for making their images sharp from the tip of the dog's nose right to the trees in the background. Everything looks sharp and in focus. It's a dead giveaway for a cell phone image. This image, I feel that the portrait mode has actually done a really good job. Same with this one here. Um, in terms of the position of my dog, I really prefer this one where I can see the side of his body and I'm getting a bit more perspective. I love the crimpy fur in the front because he was like soaked. So is Phoenix from being in this poppy field. But it was so wet and foggy this morning. It was ridiculous. But I love the crimp to his fur. I think it's super cute. This one, I love the look to his face, but I can't really see the rest of his body. I can see his booty there above his head, which I do think is adorable. I mean, of course, it's my dog. I think they're all adorable but I am going to do a quick edit on this one here. So same thing, you just start in the lights, you move it down, lift the shadows up, make sure he's looking like he's the right shade of black. I'm going to increase the warmth, but not too much on this one. So there isn't any direct sunlight coming in onto him in these images here. He's more in that shaded part um, when we were doing that shoot this morning. I'm gonna add like a little teensy weensy bit of a vignette. So we got that and I'm gonna go into the healing brush, whoops, into the healing brush here and see if I can get rid of this leash without disturbing the poppies too much. Yeah, man, I mean, that has done, I'm impressed. So I take back anything I said earlier about the healing brush not working very well. I mean, that's done an excellent job for this type of an image. Um, I, I feel like Asher does look blue here. So I'm going to go in and hit a select subject, which is gonna give me a mask on the dog. I'm gonna go into color and raise this color temperature up a bit. I'll do a quick before and after just to make sure. Now, I mean, I 
feel like that's pretty good. On my screen, it looks not too bad. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I really enjoy this picture. I think it looks really sweet. And for a cell phone, I am impressed. I have to say, I really, really am. 